All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So as we all know, the Jets had a pretty busy and productive offseason, especially pertaining towards free agency. Okay, some of these moves that Joe Douglas and this Jets organization managed to pull off is uh, flat out remarkable. I mean, some of these players that are going to be coming into this Jets locker room will, benef will benefit the team in a massive, massive way. We've brought in some pretty popular, some pretty big name players. Corey Davis, Carl Lawson, LaMarcus Joyner, uh, most recently Morgan Moses. Okay, that was a signing that happened late, super late into the process, but he's going to come in and help this team in a big, big way. But in this one, I wanted to talk about a free agent that I feel like since the beginning has been flying under the radar. A huge, huge pickup that I feel like will have a massive impact for this team. Now, it's kind of funny. There was actually two guys that I felt this way about. Uh, but the first after uh, voluntary OTAs and, and uh, minicamp and whatnot, he really started to get some love. That was Keelan Cole. But the other player here is defensive lineman Sheldon Rankins. The six foot two, 305 pound animal in the trenches signed a two year contract worth up to $17 million with the Jets this off season. Okay, 27 years old, we have to ask the question, who is Sheldon Rankins? Why why should we be excited about this signing? Well, Sheldon Rankins, as we all know, former first round pick out of Louisville, his pro comparison was Aaron Donald at the time, top 15 pick, uh, compared to Aaron Donald because of his height on the shorter end, again, six foot one, six foot two, but he had immense power, great run defender in college, played in a 4-3, 3-4, versatile guy. Uh, multiple time captain as well back at Louisville. On top of that, he had a high defensive IQ. He played with a big, big time motor, a lot of effort, a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm and electricity. And he had the potential to be a three down defensive tackle at the next level. So clearly there was a lot to like with Rankins. The Saints make him a top 15 pick and early in his Saints career, he breaks his fibula. Okay, probably the worst case scenario here. Huge, huge blow. It took him a while to get back. It took him a while to get he fully healthy and really just to get accustomed to the ways of the NFL. It wasn't until 2017 and 2018 where he truly burst onto the scene, playing in all 16 games, both years, started every single game, both years. But 2018, 2018 was just a magical year for Rankins individually. Okay, all 16 games, like we said, eight sacks, 15 quarterback hits and 40 combined tackles from a defensive tackle from a defensive tackle in his third season and he missed a lot of time already okay so the future was bright for Rankins and then more injuries occurred okay and long story short he's dealt with a lot of leg injuries some Achilles problems a knee issue and like we said a fibula earlier so this is a player who dealt he's dealt with some stuff he's he's not coming in as this as this flawless prospect but with that said you start to take a look at the future for Sheldon okay what's in store for Rankins in his new situation here with the New York Jets okay and I feel like the stars are aligning you look at the defensive coaches that we have in place you look at the system the 4-3 Robert Sala system and the personnel that Sheldon Rankins will be playing with and next to Keep in mind, at 27 years old, Sheldon's still in his prime, okay, and now he's healthy. So when we take a look at where Sheldon has been effective throughout the course of his Saints career so far, he's made an impact in a lot of different areas. The biggest, probably his best trait to me, is his ability to get after the passer from the interior, okay? The interior pass rush for Rankins is great. Now, this is a player who's taken on a lot of double teams, but when he's had his opportunities in one-on-one -on -one matchups, not only does he just win with his brute strength, but he also has the uh, the skill set, the moves to make it happen as well. In a day and age where interior pass rush is just so important because of the amount of shotgun, because of all of the quick passing, I mean, this isn't back in the day where quarterbacks are consistently taking eight step dropbacks, where edge rushers have so much time to get after the quarterback. No, in some cases, quarterbacks will literally line up in the shotgun, snap the ball, load, and then fire the football with taking one step, or in some cases, just a half step from initial contact, okay? We can take a look at the Cincinnati Bengals and Joe Burrow. He, that it's, it's a common theme within that offense. So it's so important. How can an edge rusher do that? How can an edge rusher get after the quarterback if the ball is leaving his hands within, you know, under three seconds? It's, it's impossible, especially, I mean, unless he's unblocked, but... I mean, man, interior pass rush is key. So Sheldon Rankins has that ability. He can take on double teams. He can win one-on-one -on -one matchups. He can get after the passer from the inside, which is huge. And also, when we're taking a look at the Jets roster, we kind of touched on this before as far as personnel, Carl Lawson's going to do his thing on the outside. Okay, we already know this. 
the other edge rusher position kind of up in the air john franklin myers i would say right now is probably the front runner for me i mean this is he, a lot of size a lot of strength a lot of speed i feel like he could do some damage okay we also have zaniga we also have Vinny curry uh bryce huff is another guy to watch and then next to sheldon rankins we have quinn and williams a player who much like sheldon rankins possesses a lot of potential, a lot of upside, strength, size, versatility, a guy who's taken on a lot of double teams, but can also win one-on-one -on -one matchups and get after the passer. So if Sheldon Rankins is healthy here, what do we have on this, uh, on this defensive line? We have a group that possesses a lot of room to grow, a lot of potential. Matched up with a head coach that has a track record of getting the best out of his defensive lineman, letting his defensive lineman flourish. Okay, really the only curveball that I could possibly think of is Solomon Thomas. But I can't think of any other defensive lineman under Robert Sala's guidance and tutelage that took a step back. I can't think of any. Again, outside of Solomon Thomas, and that one, that one was kind of odd because he was a top three pick little interesting that he didn't really work out but i mean man you could go down the list Kerry Hyder, nick bosa uh, deforest buckner eric armstead the 49ers have had a ton of successful defensive linemen now you look at the system that's in place all of a sudden it's complementing every single player on the line skill set maybe not so much futakasi maybe he's more so fit for a three four but at the end of the day the majority of these players that we have and also bryce huff i think bryce huff uh would be a little bit more effective as a stand-up pass rusher, but beside the point, when you look at Sheldon Rankins and Quinnen Williams manning the interior of this 4-3 defensive line, it could be insane. Now, the jury is still out on what the final roster will look like for the defensive line next season. Who knows if we'll keep Futakasi? I hope we do because I really felt like he put together uh, an awesome season last year. Granted, it was a different system, but I still feel like Futakasi can make an impact uh, with this team. But we also don't really know because Saul is a first-time head coach, because Ulbricht's going to be manning the defense, uh, you know, calling plays and whatnot. Who knows if these guys are going to be kind of rotation happy. We don't really know, uh, like, the minute splits. This is something that I've overlooked in the past. You know, uh, Quinn and Williams' rookie season, I felt like he was going to be the anchor on the defense. Just tons of minutes, uh, three down defensive tackle, but it was kind of the opposite under Greg Williams. Now... Was that a coaching decision? Was Quinn uh, was Quinn in behind? Maybe he was dealing with some sort of like minor injury. Who knows what happened? All I know is that if the Jets' defensive line can manage to stay healthy, we've had some issues with health on this defensive line in the past. Also, looking at Sheldon Rankin's history as well. But if this line can stay healthy, I think it could be great. I think it could be a top ten, possibly a top five defensive line in the league. Sheldon Rankins, Quinn and Williams manning the middle is, it's almost mind blowing. Okay. It's crazy to think about the potential. It's crazy to think about what, I mean, we could throw out the what ifs all day, but uh, man, we just have to cross our fingers that Sheldon and Quinn and both stay healthy. And I'm just really excited to see the, uh, it just, everything is there. The system, the coaching staff, uh, the players, the talent, the upside, it just rides on health. So all in all, Sheldon Rankins, I'm totally, totally excited to see what he can do for the green and white. He's healthy. He's in his prime. He has a track record of producing when he's healthy and on the field. He fits the system. There's a lot to like. There is a lot to like with Rankins. So anyway, I'll leave it there. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section about Sheldon, about Quinnen, about this defensive line uh, as a whole. Really, really exciting unit. So anyway, thanks so much. And as always, go Jets. Thank you.